Okay, we are live. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us and I welcome you to the sixth session of the day two Global Social Business Summit 2021. This sitting is going to be quite interesting because we'll be hearing from around the globe on social business arena. We want to look at some of the initiatives that they have been doing new and also hear some of the impact that they have created. To help us go through this session, I want to welcome uh, the moderator, which is uh, uh, Sadia Zahid, the program officer, UNU Center. This session is also organized by the UNU Center. Welcome, Sadia. Thank you, Robert. Um, hello, everybody. I uh, welcome you to this session where we are going to hear from uh, five initiatives uh, from around the world. Um, it, from Bangladesh, India, Germany, um, from South Africa, Botswana, as well as a um, as well as uh, one initiative from Zimbabwe. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Shidzani Mbinda, who's the CEO of uh, he's the CEO of SunPower. Social Business Fund in Botswana, which is a startup to help young female street vendors in Botswana modeled after Grameen America. We will now hear more about this initiative from him. Mr. Chidzani, please take over. Thank you very much, Sadia. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Good day, uh, Professor Yunus, and good day to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for that um, uh, nice, uh, warm welcome and uh, uh, introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Shizani Mbinda. I am from Botswana. I'm the CEO of uh, uh, SunPower Social Business uh, Fund. So basically, SunPower Social Business Fund is a, is a brainchild of SunPower Corporation Japan. Uh, and some of you may know that Sun Power Corporation in Japan, uh, which is uh, based in uh, Japan, a tire recycling company, uh, basically fighting uh, the the uh, um, the bagel, uh, on the bagel front of uh, you know climate change and environment uh, 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 cleanliness uh, by tiding help tiding Japan uh, out of uh, used tires. And those uh, good quality tires are then sent to, to Africa, <clears throat> sorry, to Africa uh, for, for, for resale. So um, some of you also may know that uh, SunPower Corporation Japan has a joint venture company with uh, Grameen, uh, which is called G Japan SunPower um, uh, in, in, in Bangladesh. Uh, so SunPower uh, Social Business Fund was formed to help uh, young female vendors uh, in, in Botswana uh, by offering them small loans, uh, small loans, small affordable loans um, for them to boost their small businesses. Uh, and also uh, those that want to initiate new uh, vending businesses in, in, um, in Botswana. And uh, some may ask like why, why females instead of uh, like encompassing the whole uh, the whole country. Well, uh, that demographic is the uh, most affected economically here in Botswana, is the most uh, economically challenged here in Botswana. They are affected by high school uh, dropout rate, uh, period poverty, poverty, peer pressure, early pregnancies, and lack of mentorship programs. Also affected by high unemployment rate, uh, lack of access uh, to health information, and Botswana has a high number of uh, young single mother-led families as well. And so also uh, there's a, a lot of research that shows that uh, investing in, in, in females actually has more benefits as uh, young mothers or mothers tend to invest back into the society more than uh, you, uh, their male uh, counterparts. So that's, uh, that's a gap that we are trying to fill as, as um, SunPower Social Business Fund here in Botswana. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening. Uh, are there any questions for me, please? Okay, 
Okay. Um, while we wait for questions, um, maybe we can move on to the next presenter. Next presenter is Ms. Arti Wig. She's the head of future thinking at Uno Social Business and the co-founder of Uno Social Business India, where she catalyzed the creation of two social business funds, one in Mumbai and one in Bangalore. Ms. Arti Wig. Thank you so much. Thanks, Adya. Um, so greetings to the whole social business family from Mumbai, uh, where we're just uh, finished celebrating Diwali. So very happy Diwali to all of you. Um, really uh, excited to be here today and to share with you um, what we've been up to on the research side at Unis Social Business. Um, so as Adya mentioned, um, I currently am of, of leading research and what we call future thinking at Unis Social Business. The idea behind this was, um, sorry, the slides are moving forward. So, you know, in, in case you don't know what Unis Social Business does, we have two arms. One is we have social business funds that invest in um, social business entrepreneurs. Um, and then the second work, piece of work that we do is with large corporations uh, where we help them to create social businesses where they're linking their core business capabilities with a social or environmental problem and creating a, a, a business, a social business solution to that problem. Um, what, what we're trying to do with the, in the research unit is we realize that you know, we've been now working with, with, with corporations for several years now, um, almost a decade, um, where I've been uh, focused uh, is, is India. And in India, for example, we set up something called a corporate action tank a, a few years ago, together with the Tata Trusts, and uh, which had um, companies like Tata Steel and Siemens Healthcare and uh, others that joined it with the intention of creating a small social business project. Um, so we we have we have action we have an action tank in India we have an action tank in Brazil we've we've done several of this sort of work around the world um, and as we started doing more of this work we we realized that there was a gap in um, practitioner research which uh, would really um, zoom out of individual projects and provide very concrete tools that will help companies implement these social business projects better. So if they're, for example, at the, uh, you know, at the complete starting phase of implementing a social business project, uh, you know, they, they really need a lot of specific frameworks and tools to help them to think of what sort of social business to start. If they've already started, sometimes they need a lot of help thinking through how to create buy-in internally. Um, and then sometimes they also need tools and frameworks that help them to scale the work that they're doing. So what we decided to do was create a new research unit that would focus on the how of, of social business projects by large companies and provide these tools and frameworks. So what I wanted to do today was just share with the entire social business family what we've been up to in this research unit for the last um, uh, basically couple of years. Um, and show you what's coming up next year as well, with the intention of obviously hoping that what we've created is useful to you uh, or useful to the, you know, to, to in your countries or to the communities that you work with. Um, and second, also invite collaboration because, um, you know, we, we, want, we need to do a lot more of this. So we'd love to hear ideas on, um, on what are some of the other things that you think tools and frameworks need to be developed around. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit nerdy now, so I'll take your uh, your your permission um, to do that um, and uh, just share with you. Let me just start with what are the things that we have already done in the research unit? What are the uh, reports and tools that are available to you already? Um, so the first thing that we did, uh, so we have three things that we've already done. One is we created a playbook um, and case studies for social business entrepreneurs that are sitting inside companies and want to create social business projects. Uh, you know, a great example is obviously Grameen Danone. So if you're an entrepreneur like Kareen Bazina, who I'm sure a lot of you know, and you want to get started um, with creating a social business project, you know, this playbook is for you. And I'll talk about it in a second. Um, the second is we've, we've created another a research report, which is around measuring you know, we hear a lot of stories about the benefits of social business on large companies. We talk about how it changes mindset, how it improves employee engagement, 
uh, you know, how it creates new skills and new innovation skills, new ways of looking at the world that are very useful to the company. Um, and but no one has been able to measure that no one has been able to so far put data around that. Um, and that's what we've tried to do by creating quantitative experiments with some researchers that measure the um, the uh, the social return, not not the economic return, but the social return of social business projects on large companies. Um, and then the third thing that we've created is a social business procurement manual. And this is for very specifically for those companies that want to start sourcing products and services from social businesses. Um, and a good example of that is, for example, IKEA, which sources from a social business called Rangsutra in India, which is part of uh, the portfolio of the UNIS Social Business Fund Bangalore. If companies want to start doing that, um, it's not as simple as saying, let's get a contract with a, with a social business. There are several steps that you have to um, take in order to get ready. Uh, to get social business ready and the procurement manual helps with that. Um, so very briefly, let me talk about uh, each of these three pieces just to get you give you a glimpse of what's inside these reports. Um, so the, the first one, which is the playbook for social business entrepreneurs. Um, is, uh, is essentially it has case studies lots and we looked at about 200 companies around the world that were interested in social business and then we deep dived into within uh, we deep dived into about the 47 of them within the social business family that um, have uh, actual social business projects and based on that we created case studies and we created we um, we looked at we quantified the benefits that they experience um, as a result of having these social business projects. So that's one. The second is um, we we created uh, you know as I mentioned, a series of quantitative experiments. What are these? Essentially, we heard again and again from social business entrepreneurs uh, 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 inside companies that there's a huge impact um, as a result of creating that project on, say, for example, employee engagement or on customer perception or on you know various other um, levers, the key business metrics that, for example, a CEO or a board tracks. Um, and what we did is we designed experiments that are in the form of A-B tests that allow us to say, for example, as a result of Grameen Danone, there is a purely illustrative 70% uh, increase in employee engagement. And this data is very useful inside the company to create buy-in. So I know I'm out of time, so I'll just quickly flip through this. Uh, the third is um, we've got uh, a social procurement manual, as I mentioned, which has lots of different tools and frameworks for companies that, that want to get started on, on, um, on sourcing from social businesses, uh, working with social businesses in their supply chain. Um, and what's coming up next year is, um, is uh, two additional pieces of work. One is a playbook for social business entrepreneurs um, for in India. Um, that's that's something that will be released sometime around March, which will have case studies of social business, uh, corporate social businesses in India and um, tools and frameworks on how to get started, um, including, you know, uh, experiences from our action tank. And we're also creating a CEO purpose playbook, which is um, targeted at um, this is a global piece of research. So it's not for India, but it's looking it's going to be providing um, uh, again, insights and tools and frameworks for CEOs that want to transform their entire company into behaving more like a social business. Um, so that's that's essentially um, the, the pieces of research that are coming up um, and what we already have. I'll share links to this on, on the Zoom chat if I'm able to. Um, so please do have a look. And if you have any ideas for um, collaboration or if you want to know anything more, please reach out to me. I'll also share my email address. Thank you very much for letting me share this. Thank you, um, Arti, for uh, sharing that wonderful initiative. Um, before we move on, I'd like to um, have Professor Yunus um, say a few words. It's Sir, so you're on mute. Uh, just uh, welcoming you uh, in this uh, discussion. This fam all family members. It's kind of updates. Uh, wh wh where are we? We know what we. You have been doing lots of lots of work. Uh, we share each other's information. Now this is a kind of collective way of uh, say hello and uh, 
get to know what's up, what's up. So please go ahead. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Um, okay, so our next presenter is um, Dominic, Mr. Dominic uh, Douster. He is the managing director of uh, UMIS and you, the YY Foundation. He advocates the social business movement in various European and Asian countries, as well as um, in Colombia and Africa, mo mostly focused on East Africa. Dominic, if we could have you on screen. I have a presentation. Thank you, dear Sadia, and uh, dear Professor Yunus, and dear Yunus Center, Grameen Creative Lab, Mount Kenya University friends and colleagues. Good afternoon and good evening. Greetings from Germany. It gives me great delight to be part of this uh, Global Social Business Summit. I learned that more than 800 registered participants from 88 countries are participating, and I wish to thank and congratulate our host for organizing this, uh, our annual family gathering in these trying times. And it's an honor for me to be here with you today, especially surrounded by amazing people presenting remarkable, remarkable social business initiatives in this session. So in the next minutes, I'm happy to give you a brief overview of the UNIS and U, the YY Foundation. We focus on Professor Yunus's uh, vision to create a world of three zeros, as you could uh, see in the first slide, um, zero uh, carbon emission, zero wealth concentration for any poverty and zero unemployment by unleashing un uh, entrepreneurship in all. Next. And that serves our mission um, as we are dedicated to Professor Yunus's life work in particular to the dissemination of social business since 2012. Next. And how do we mainly work? We have key partners, which we are very proud to be able to support in their work, who are fostering social business development globally in their respective fields. Most of you will know these leading global social business organizations and their activities and their charitable partners. So there's Grameen Creative Lab, which is, uh, which is promoting social business and creating awareness for events and workshops. They have UNIS you know, Social Business, uh, which finances and grows social businesses in many countries worldwide. And of course, the UNIS Center, the global hub for social business development in Dhaka, with a strong focus on academia and educational development and social business. Next. You can see the people behind the foundation, our honorable chairman, Professor Yunus, and the board, which is composed of global leaders from the field, Slamia Morshid, Executive Director from the UNIS Center, Ms. Saskia Breusten, CEO and co-founder of UNIS Social Business, Sophia Eisenman, co-founding member of UNIS Social Business, and the initiator of YY Foundation, Hans Weitz, CEO and co-founder of the Grameen Creative Lab. Also to be seen, my colleague Carsten from the accounting here in Germany, and our dear colleagues, Robert and Daniel from East Africa, who are co coordinating and communicating our project there. Next. Uh, the main supporter of Wire Foundation since the start of operations has been the postcode lottery, and uh, especially the Dutch postcode lottery. Since 2013, we are working together in social business development globally, delivered by our key partners. Here to mention also our important holistic joint social business project in Colombia, 2019 to 2021, to further the peace building process through social business and our new major joint social business development project tackling youth unemployment and environmental problems in East Africa from 2020 to 2023. I'm also happy to announce that uh, we are entering into a new uh, partnership with the Dutch Postcode Lottery until the year of 2024. Next. A brief overview how we go forward together to create the world of three zeros that we wish to have. Um, we keep supporting our key partners to fostering social business development to fight climate change and environmental issues. For example, to mention here, the Grow Up Incubator and the Startup Program by the UNIS Environment Hub also uh, included into our uh, holistic project in East Africa or 
the continuation of supporting social business academia, for example, supporting the, the social business academia conference has just been completed with Mankena University, or um, supporting uh, youth involvement in social business, the Free Zero Clubs or the Young Challenger Program, as you will witness here throughout the Global Social Business Summit. Next. And this is one topic that I would like to raise uh, uh, attention as well. We were involved from the beginning in Professor Yemus's call to make COVID-19 vaccine a global common good. And as this is still urgent, we um, can be asked for your support and please sign on vaccinecommongood.org and support this most important initiative. Next. And with this, I hand back to you, uh, Sadia, and thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Dominic, for that comprehensive overview. Our um, next speaker is Ms. Camille Zamora. She's an internationally acclaimed soprano and the co-founder and co-executive director of Sing for Hope. Sing for Hope is an organization which was founded with the belief that access to the arts is a right, not a privilege. Ms. Camille Zamora. Thank you so much, Sadia, and what a joy to be with you here. It's the second best thing to being together in person and just so grateful to see everyone. Hello, Professor Yunus, Lamia, Hans, thank you. I wanna begin by saying one of the great joys of Sing for Hope is that we get to unite with this incredible community. And I think, you know, we sometimes joke that we begin with social business principle number seven and work our way backwards. Do it with joy has been built into the fabric, obviously, of the Global Social Business Summit. And Sing for Hope holds that the arts as purveyors of joy are optimizers for goals in various sectors. So very quick overview of where we began 20 years ago in this city, New York City, Monica Yunus and I were students at Juilliard. We responded to the events of 9-11 by bringing our music into the streets. We worked with firehouses, specifically the firehouse that shares a city block with our school, Juilliard. They lost 13 of their firefighters on 9-11. And we began to, to just that very day go and share music. In the many years that followed, we continued to bring music into the streets, into hospitals and schools. And the pandemic right before it hit found us working with 200 schools, 25 hospitals around New York City and doing the Synchro Pianos in New York. Obviously, the world changed with the beginning of the pandemic in every single way. And one of the great changes in our world is that suddenly my entire industry, the arts industry was unemployed. The Americans for the Arts estimates that the pandemic impact on live performing arts has been 95% unemployment or underemployment. So for our organization that centers on leveraging what was largely volunteer forces of performing artists, we found that obviously this was a call for us to make a conversion that we had long wanted to make anyways. Converting from a volunteer powered organization to an organization that provides employment for artists. Over the course of the pandemic, Sing for Hope has employed 382 performing artists. We actually became the largest employer of freelance musicians in New York City during the pandemic. And we did this by changing the value proposition that most musicians follow, certainly when coming out of traditional classical music schools, which is that it's not about the people in the theaters necessarily. We welcome those back and we know they'll be back fully, fully soon, but it's about finding ways to meet people where they are along the trajectory of life, which includes schools, which includes hospitals, which includes ends of life. So specifically, what does that mean? We began to obviously use this, this technology of Zoom and zooming into our isolated elder care facilities to bring the comfort of music in virtual form. But we also partnered with New York State Department of Health to do what was actually one of the largest initiatives of bringing artists into the vaccination process. So every day for 125 consecutive days, Sing for Hope brought music to the country's largest vaccination site, Javits Center, which I should also mention because a, a you know poignant detail is quite frankly, this was also the site that when our hospitals were unable to absorb all of the 
people who initially were dying in New York City from, from COVID, Javits Center, which is a convention center, became the spillover hospital site. So quite speaking quite frankly, this is a place in which many lives were also lost. Once the vaccination process began, it became a place of hope in many ways, but at the same time, there was still a lot of anxiety. So very, very quick last word about the arts and specifically music in the role of of psychotropic medication. Um, the United States spends $113 billion annually on mental health care. Very, very little of that is spent intentionally on the oldest medicine of all, which is the arts in mental health. And so again, we're partnering with the New York State Department of Health and actually now with the Center of Disease Control to track what we found at Javits Center, which is that when the musicians were there, the doctors reported far fewer anxiety related complaints. This has direct economic impact because there were far fewer demands on the already very exhausted medical team. And there was far much, uh, far, far fewer uh, medications, anti-anxiety medications dispensed. So with that, I'd like to hand it to Sadia. There's a video. Um, Sadia, we can share a couple of minutes of that. And thank you for your attention. Musicians around the country are trying to ease the nerves of those getting their COVID shots by performing songs like New York, New York. For many musicians, this is the first live performance for them in a year. The pandemic has devastated the arts world and live concerts and theater have been almost non-existent. I spoke with one group of New York City artists who are trying to soothe the soul with a little melody. For most of us, life's milestones are marked by a soundtrack. That's why performances are popping up at vaccination sites across the country. And whether it's Yo-Yo Ma in Massachusetts or Richmond Philharmonic players in Virginia, it seems clear there's medicine in music. It was actually really great to come out of a really tense, you know, environment and hear the music. When I sat down, they were playing God Only Knows Where I'd Be Without You, Beach Boys. So it was a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. In New York City, the Jacob Javits Convention Center sprawling campus has transformed into the country's largest vaccination site, vaccinating 14,000 people daily. Javits CEO, Alan Steele. I mean, this represents freedom. They don't lose their mask, but what they do is they lose some of their innovations about the future. And while there's understandable anxiety. In the beginning, I was like nervous, a little bit. The music offers a relaxing remedy for patients. We've noticed that there's a direct correlation between decreased levels of anxiety and uh, calming people's nerves when the music is present. And a place for artists to finally perform. I have artists every day looking at me and saying, you have brought me back my first gig for the last year. Opera singer Camille Zamora is co-founder of Sing for Hope, a nonprofit that's hiring musicians to play the vaccine center. For many, the first crowd they've seen in over a year. Well, I was playing at Phantom on Tuesday and I think Moulin Rouge on Friday and then everything shut down. Violinist Victoria Patterson teamed up with Zamora after the pandemic shut down her busy Broadway schedule. I live in this neighborhood and I was out on the ground basically looking for places to play. The National Guard is here. It's not like a warm and cozy place. So we can just soften the mood and feel like celebration, you know? Broadway and to get where I am and and now with the pandemic I'm like I can come back from this wow it feels like water in the desert you know it just feels like what we've been missing it's the cheapest oldest medication that we have it's music sing for hope thank you Sadia. 11 Camille Zamora thank you so much Sadia so thank you all. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to answer any questions and I'm honored to be in touch with anyone. And thank you, Professor Yunus. Again, so many, you know, enormous thanks to 
to the whole Eunice family for always so embracing the arts and culture piece. I will say frankly that so often in global convenings, the art, the arts voice isn't necessarily represented as a seat at the table. And that's always been such a part of the Eunice family um, is to include, to include the arts. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Camille Zamora. Um, next, we move on to Mr. Um, uh, Muhammad Ashraful Hassan, the executive direct executive vice chairman of Grameen Telecom. He has been working with the Grameen Group since 1984 in promoting and providing easy access to GMS cellular services in rural Bangladesh. It is my privilege and honor to invite Mr. Muhammad Ashraful Hassan on screen. Thank you, Sadia. Good evening, everyone from Dhaka and welcome this session. I already Shadia mentioned that I am the man, uh, executive vice chairman of Grameen Telecom. Uh, now I'll present uh, about Ananna Construction and Development Limited works. So here I am the managing director of Ananna Construction and Development Limited. I will take you through my presentation about the formation of that this company, as well as some completed projects and some upcoming projects. So we are calling mega projects in Grameen Group for social business. So I'll take you through. Ononda Construction and Development Limited, a social business company established in March 2021 with the aims to embark on a journey of building greener and more sustainable future. Engaged in all sort, sorts of construction works of Grameen Group and other organizations, under Ononna, a number of social business projects are going to be established. Ononna, a company, spin out from Grameen Telecom Trust before setting up the company. Some technical people are working in Grameen Telecom Trust and completed numbers of remarkable projects. Now we have some projects in pipeline. So I'll go back, go background how we entered this company. <clears throat> Grameen Group is trying to transform societies through social business, a cause driven business since their inception. Among them, Grameen Telecom Trust established in 2010. Is the flagship entity and implements facilitates social business for a better world. In accordance with the strategic plan of GTT, a department named Project and Infrastructure Development to assist and manage in building and construction of social business projects in a sustainable way was formed in 2012. PID department have a stalwart team and furnished with contemporary brand new construction equipments. So success story of PID. PID has implemented and provided project management service for projects and infrastructure of Grameen Group. It already implemented some mega projects of GTT worth about nearly 60 million US dollar, also implemented different projects for other Grameen organization, that is health center, eye, hosp eye care hospital, training center, etc. So some notable project already completed by PID, Shamaji Convention Center and Hospitality Management Institute, first phase, Telecom Bhavan, the corporate headquarter of Grameen Group, and first phase of Shamaji Health Complex, where we established nine seat capacity academic building and 700 bed hospital for female student for Grameen Caledonian College of Nursing. And we already handed over this project this year. So I'll show you some picture of this completed projects by PID before formation of this company. So this is the Shamaji Convention Center and the Telecom Bhavan, some view of Telecom Bhavan inside of this building. And the Grameen Caledonian College of Nursing, just we handed over these projects to GCC and this year. Left side is academic building and then right side is hostel building for 700 student nurse, female student. And this is the inside picture of the academic building and the rooftop is cladded by uh, solar panel and this uh, also the classroom you can see here. Just uh, from PID transform into the 
company name on on in march 2021 pid department transformed into the standalone social business construction company name Onunna Construction and Development Limited. The objectives are to turn the vision that Honorable Chairman Nobel Laureate Professor Muhammad Yunus a reality to ensure smooth implementation of the upcoming and pipeline projects. Onunna Construction and Development Limited would thrive to lead the construction business in year to come, focusing on three zeros. So her, what is the vision of our projects, a company? We plan to reconstruct the construction sector by implementing sustainable, innovative, and forward thinking building practice, executing all the construction and infrastructure development works of Grameen Group and other organizations efficiently, cost effectively, and in time, meeting the need for dwellings by implementing various housing projects for low income and rural people in a social business model producing skill manpower through vocational training institute, short course, long course, research institute, etc. Engaged in business such as export, import, manufacturing, various types of construction materials, producing ready-mix concrete, clay bricks, replacing and building materials, enterprising any times, types of prospective business, joint venture with local and foreign companies, Establishing overseas office based on the circumstances and when required. <clears throat> the three principles that drive on and up forward, working towards benefiting communities, encouraging and implementing sustainable practice, and always ensuring quality. So generally already been started. Company registered in March this year and already been awarded for construction of five sub substation in Dhaka City together with the Chinese company under government projects. Income from such projects, other than other Grameen projects, will be invested for community development in rural areas in line with the social business principle. Some upcoming projects are in pipeline. So first one is Samajik Convention Center. First phase already been completed. Second phase in pipeline. Extension of Telecom Bhavan and second phase of Samajik Health Complex, Nursing Institute, and hospital in Chittagong. Samajik Convention Center and Hospitality Management Institute, the design already been development. The picture uh, you've shown this design already been completed. We are waiting for authority approval. So extension of Telecom Bhavan, you have the right side, there is a three plot. In the middle, we already built the Telecom Bhavan. Two other commercial building with guest accommodation facilities in one building, especially for international interns of UNUS Center and Grameen Bank will be constructed with the Telecom Bhavan. The construction will be a start hopefully first quarter of 2022. Total buildable area is 25,000 square meter. Estimated project cost is 15 million US dollar. Completion year is 2024. So this is actually the uh, view of the complex. Samajik Health Complex. So this is the biggest project ever we have undertook. The objectives of the projects to provide a state of art healthcare services to the mass people at an affordable price besides, besides regular student, economically challenged student, especially female will get opportunity for medical education. Project comprised with 526 bed hospital, 500 seat capacity medical college and 750 seat capacity health technology institute. The design development already been done. We are waiting, we were submitted uh, for approval to the authority. After immediate getting approval, we will go for construction. Hopefully we will start construction for this big projects ever, first quarter of 2022. Total buildable area will be 130,000 square meter estimated project cost is 215 million US dollar. Targeted completion year is 2025. So this is the actually the design from the architect and hopefully we'll manage it in a similar way when it will be completed. Some inside view of the hospital. 
Nandan Nursing Institute and Hospital in Chittagong. It is a smaller version of Shamajik Health Complex to provide a standard healthcare service with affordable cost for local people and nursing education. It is uh, obviously smaller than the uh, health complex in Dhaka. Estimated project cost is 12.4 million US dollar. Targeted completion year is 2024. So to implement this such a big projects, which is in our pipeline, also we have a lot of small projects in our hand. We need a strength to manage these projects. So we have more than 60 engineers, architect, and different technical hands to provide design, project management, construction, operation, and maintenance service. So we have brand new machine and equipments, construction equipments, sufficient quantity of scaffolding, shuttering equipments we have. We own the ready mix concrete plant, and we have a very good testing laboratory and a skilled manpower, and we can provide huge logistics to manage this such a project. So thank you all. Uh, it is the end of my presentation. Hope we'll able to present real construction work of all described project in next GSBS. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you, sir, for this in-depth insight in these ongoing social business projects. Um, now I would like to invite my colleague, Mr. Shihab Qadir, the International Relationships Manager at Chima Center for an exciting, exciting announcement. Um, Shihab? Thank you, Sadia. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, good. good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the official launch of UNU Center's global competitions. Uh, as you all know, UNU Center has been doing these competitions globally for years now with partnering with the 94 YSBCs. It has been done regionally, it has been done nationally as well. And time and time again, we see that it encourages people, especially the youth, to tap into their inner potential and come up with innovative solutions, um, some any sort of solutions that can tackle their social problems in their communities. And this also combines academia and on the ground practice to develop a social business of their choice. Uh, I'm sure you remember HEC Montreal has been doing these global competitions from four years now. And AIT Thailand uh, has been also hosting a social business fiction challenge based on the pioneering ideas of Professor Mohamed Yunus during the early days of the pandemic. But for the very first time in this world, the global competitions will be based out of East Africa and Southern Africa. Our joint, uh, our collaboration with, with the Catholic University of Zimbabwe based in Harare. It is a highly reputed university and not to mention the first YSBC in Africa. Our, our other co-partners are YY Ventures and YY Foundation as well. And I will, before I pass on the, the mic to Sharika, I just want to say any person from any background, from any corner of the globe, who has any idea of social business, or even if you're not from this field, you are more than encouraged to register and participate. If you're a firefighter in New York, if having a social business solution, if you're a friend of Greta Thunberg, but have a better option, you can join in. Or if you want to be the yo -yo, the next yo-yo mind social business and combine music and social business to come up with more viable solutions. It only takes one idea, it only takes one pitch. So I would love for you to join and register online. And Sharika, over to you now. Thank you so much, Ia. Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. I am Sharika Sadaf, Head of Programs at YY Ventures, and I am happy to present the UNICENTER competitions to you. UNICENTER, in collaboration with YY Ventures, UNICENU, the YY Foundation, and Catholic University of Zimbabwe, is launching two competitions to nurture social innovation and entrepreneurship among next generation of young talents, the Social Business Design Competition and the Social Fiction Design Competition. The Social Business Design Competition is a global platform which will promote youth-driven entrepreneurial solutions that tackle some of the most pressing social issues of our time. We are in the lookout for young people from across the globe who will bring in novel ideas that are aligned with sustainable development goals. 
Nobel laureate Professor Mohamed Yunus has challenged the youth and their potential. He said, social business raises questions for yourself. Who am I? It opens up to challenge your inner potential to create the world you want. You get inspired and you inspire others. The objective of this competition is to unleash entrepreneurial solutions from a pool of global talent who are on a mission to create a world of three zeros. We invite and encourage young talents between ages 12 to 35 who are entrepreneurial and creative to take part in our competition. It comprises of three rounds, idea submission, social business building, and the pitching round. The submission portal will open in a few minutes when Professor Yunus and our respected guests open it and will remain open until February 2022. Top participants for the competition will be shortlisted in March and the series of workshops will take place in April 2022. And by the next Social Business Day, we promise to bring you uh, the winners. Participants will receive training from Participants will receive training from a team of successful entrepreneurs, industry experts, and social business leaders. Winners will get the opportunity to join us in a four month long incubation program offered by YY Ventures, comprising of three intensive three day long boot camps on social innovation, social business building, and, story, uh, and storytelling and pitching. Now, more about the social fiction design competition. Imagine a world 50 years from now. Like the call from Professor Mohamed Yunus, if we imagine today what kind of world we want, then that is the world that will be created. The social fiction design competition welcomes talented young minds to reimagine a new future with the belief that if we start thinking about social fiction like social, uh, um, thinking about social fiction like science fiction, we will trigger social innovation. This competition is a platform for the youth to envision a world that could be if social problems were fixed, producing new fictional ways to solve them. Like the social business design competition, the social fiction design competition is open to young talents between the age of 12 to 35. Maybe you are a writer, an artist, a cinematographer, performer, journalist, advocate, or a singer. We are looking for you. Uh, there are main six categories, namely writing, rhetoric, illustration, animation, cinematography, and poster presentation. Like the social business design competition, the portal for the social fiction design competition will open tonight, and the grand finale will take place in June during the 12th social business day. To send us your social business and social fiction ideas, compete at competitions.unicenter.org. Over to you, Shihab Bhai. Thanks, Sharika. That was quite informative. I would now like to call on Shazib, who is the co-founder and CEO of YY Ventures, to come in and share a few words. Shazib, if you can talk about the incubation support that you usually give to the young aspiring entrepreneurs, how does that help them in nurturing their idea? Thank you so much, Shia Bhai. Um, uh, I'm so pumped to say something. So let me up if you remember, in 2015, we wrote a concept paper and we hosted a competition. And I went to Sar and then we were not sure what kind of outcomes we will have. I still remember what Professor Yunus said, which deeply inspired us. He said, who knows, one of these ideas will one day completely change the world. So um, my request to all the young minds who are with us today, if we do not take action now, who will? If we do not take action by building social businesses on what model we will find to create a world of three zeros, so as um, Sharika has mentioned, um, top 10 teams will go through a rigorous four month long incubation program um, offered by YY Ventures. Um, we have been offering this program for six years now, uh, only in Bangladesh, but we are super excited that this, this time we are going to be able to work with a pool of uh, talents coming all across the world. Um, they get three boot camps. The first one is we work with them. We do not want to teach them. We want to support them in terms of designing their social business model with beneficiaries. Because I um, truly believe it's not in your computer or your website or your PowerPoint slides. 
It's actually in the field when you find innovative models that solves problems. Um, the second model is <clears throat> if you want to really design your social business, who do you talk to? How do you raise funding? How do you tell your story? And how do you create an effective narrative? Another thing that I've learned over the past eight years is I think everybody who builds a social business, we have a little activist in our heart. So for this, it's really important that we know how to create these narratives. And finally, um, once you speak to your customers, um, your beneficiaries or your investors, how do you tell a story? How do you um, talk about your product or service? And um, we are also planning to work with a range of organizations in Africa and all across the globe. And most importantly, in the Yunus and Grameen family of social business network, who can support this entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shazib. That was really inspiring, igniting the uh, hidden uh, activists in all of us, regardless of our age and background. Uh, coming up next, uh, Dominic uh, from YY Foundation, if you would like to share a few words of encouragement, you have been dealing with projects like these competitions globally, but this is the first time in East Africa. If you want to say hi. Hello, everyone, again. Um, first of all, congratulations uh, to the launch of this social business design and social fiction competition. And I can only echo Shazib here. Uh, this is a very important uh, initiative because young people bring concrete ideas to the table. And eventually, these ideas become real social business tackling and solving problems. So a world of three zeros can be achieved. So I wish all partnering universities in East Africa and all UNIS Global Social Business Centers globally, along with all upcoming participants, uh, great learning experiences and best of luck. And of course, lots of joy. Thank you. Thanks, Dom. Our partner on the ground, Catholic University of Zimbabwe, uh, our lead technical and research lead, Dr. Douglas, he is unable to come to this uh, session now due to some technical difficulties. He sends his regrets and he's super excited yet to be a part of this global collaboration. So moving on, we would like to uh, request Ms. Lamia Moshe to uh, give us some words of encouragement before we launch it. Lamia, over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Shihab, Sharika, and um, Shazib. We've been waiting. I was talking about the launch of this competition, the two competitions at ESBAC already, uh, because this is a, a two, uh, putting into practice what Professor Yunus has been saying for a long time. One is with the social business competition. It's not just a, a training on social business, but it results in actual creation of social businesses that can be put into practice to create the world of three zeros. And also what he's been saying about uh, social fiction, that young people, especially very young uh, uh, kids, should imagine the world they want to live in. And that is a very critical thing that's missing in our education system, uh, which is, uh, you know, quite sort of narrow and that if you want to break through and create these civilizational changes, we have to have this uh, young people thinking about the world and how they can work towards creating that world. So we're very excited that as part of that broader vision, we can do this competition, which is in the framework of our East Africa project with YY Foundation, but which is universal. It's for everyone. It's launched with CUZ in Zimbabwe together with YY Ventures and Unicenter, but it's for everyone. It's uh, for all of our partners who are in this session, everyone can be part of it. And uh, with the clear timeline that you have given, I, I think we will have a, a very exciting process and also very exciting outcomes. So all the best for that. Thank you, Lamiapa. In fact, the social fiction challenge is uh, quite interesting. Even my nephew, a couple of days back, he's only six and a half years old. He said that, Shab, Mama, I have an idea for a social business. And he doesn't know anything about social business, but he knows Professor Mahmoudin's picture. That's all he needed for inspiration. But uh, at the last of this uh, session, I would just like to request Professor Mahmoudin to share some concluding words and would also uh, request his permission to launch the official website of the competition while we end this session. Sir, over to you, if you have any comments. Sir, so you're on mute. I'm mute. Okay. Now, congratulations. Let's uh, it's come to the launching stage now. This is the beginning. Uh, we have high hopes that uh, lots of people will participate and good ideas will come. And at the end, there'll be something significant idea. That 
not one idea, but multiple ideas will come and see how we can put into action. That's how the ideas are generated. Ideas is like um, kind of a, a flinter stone. You uh, put the, one, each, uh, one against each other and some spark comes up. So the competition is just a sparking process. So you put the competition, the flint stones start hitting each other and uh, suddenly you have a uh, whole uh, fountain of ideas and fantastic uh, fire that you build around it. So this is what the competition is all about. Uh, we're very happy that uh, you're doing it in the Global Social Business Summit. Let's make sure that uh, we uh, follow through the whole steps and come up with the good, good uh, projects in the process. Uh, good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you for encouraging words. And before we launch the website, I noticed Hans is also here. Hans, if you want to say hi and give some words of encouragement. Yeah, of course. I'd like to say hello and hi and congratulations and keep it YY. That's the most keep it YY. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. So with uh, Professor Majinus' permission, uh, Sharika, if you could do the honors and launch the global, global website on, your, on our screen, please. Perfect. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the global competitions hosted by UNU Center and our uh, co-facilitators and organizations. If you can scroll down, you would see there are a couple of regions. It's very user-friendly. It's very streamlined. It will be very easy to download, uh, see it from your internet connection, regardless of you're in Africa or any other region. We have the social fiction design competition over here. There are two buttons. You can explore more ideas about it, get to know more about it. And there's an apply now button, which takes to takes you to another landing page. And we have the logos of organizations, the Catholic University of Zimbabwe, and SBDC is in another page. And on the top of the website, Sharika, if you could go up to the top, on the uh, the, on the top right corner, there are four buttons as well, which talks about our partners, our contact information, and gives specific information regarding the design competition, as well as the social business fiction challenge as well. Here it is. This is regarding the social business design competition. Uh, the roadmap is given below, the one that you saw, uh, saw on the screen. And this is open to everyone. Uh, you can apply, I think, from today onwards up till February, as Sharika was saying. So this is really exciting and I thank all our partners, especially the Catholic University of Zimbabwe for working on the ground. There will be other universities in East Africa as well participating and as well as the 94 uh, YSBCs globally. And any person who, is, who have no, doesn't have any idea of social business but wants to know more about it, they are more than welcome. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Professor Ahmad Yunus for giving us this competition, the idea of social business fiction challenge as well. Thank you, Lami Apa. Thank you, everyone. With this, we conclude our, my session. Uh, over to you, Satya. Thank you, Shihab. Um, very exciting times, very exciting times. Um, I will uh, like to ask Robert back to take us forward, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sadia, uh, for taking us through such an informative session. Uh, to our presenters, a big thank you for bringing us up to speed on the amazing work you're doing in the different focus areas of social business. I mean, from Botswana to USA, Bangladesh, indeed, social business is planting seeds towards a new economy. Congratulations also for launching the social business design competition. I want to take this opportunity to appreciate Mount Kenya University for co-hosting this event. They have really taken good care of me. I've been working here since the onset of this summit. Thank you so much, Mount Kenya. So we have come to the end of this session. Uh, we'll take a short break. Uh, the next session organized by UNU Social Business will begin at 18.45 East African time. And the session is, uh, just a moment. Yeah, the session uh, will be how social entrepreneurs can transform companies into a force for good. Thank you so much for joining us and let's uh, meet on the next session. Thank you. <laughs>